inspecting, filling, and labeling small cylinders. Before you begin the process of inspecting and filling small cylinders, make sure that the dispenser is properly prepared. Module 3 of the video gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to properly get the dispenser ready to fill cylinders and containers. Please review this module if you have not already done so. Pre-fill visual check. Customers are often unaware of the many safety procedures that must be performed before having their cylinders filled, such as inspection, requalification, purging, and filling requirements. And you may have no idea what happened to the container prior to its arrival for refilling. However, the safety of yourself, your customers, and the public is the highest priority, so use reasonable care in handling and assessing a small cylinder before filling. DOT regulations require a visual check before a small cylinder can be filled or refilled to verify that it is fit for continued service. Prior to inspecting a cylinder, remove any plastic or paper sleeve so you are easily able to spot any problems. After inspection, if any of the following are found, the cylinder must not be refilled and should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Problems that prevent refilling a cylinder include cracks or leaks, bulging, serious denting or gouging, defective valves unless properly repaired or replaced, defective or leaking pressure relief device unless properly repaired or replaced, damage to the cylinder valve, valve protection, and cylinder foot rings, Evidence of physical abuse, fire or heat damage, or excessive rusting or corrosion. Out-of-date requalification. Steel cylinders subjected to fire must be requalified, reconditioned, or repaired by the original manufacturer or a DOT-authorized repair facility before being placed back in service. Aluminum cylinders subjected to fire must be permanently removed from service. If you encounter a cylinder with XXX over the DOT specification number or marked with condemned on the shoulder, head, or collar, do not refill. Instead, mark and set aside in a designated safe area. Valves and accessories should also be inspected prior to filling. Many cylinder valves are made with non-metallic or soft parts, such as nylon, rubber, and Teflon. When these materials become damaged or worn out, propane liquid or vapor can leak out of the valve and create a potentially hazardous situation. They should be checked regularly for signs of aging and wear. Valve accessories may become broken or lost, allowing dirt or moisture to enter the valve. Inspect and replace any faulty or missing dust caps. Valves may also be damaged through improper cylinder maintenance. For example, service personnel may fail to use proper brushes or applicators around cylinder openings when painting them. As a result, gauge faces, weep holes in filler valves, and discharge openings of relief valves may be blocked with paint. If you find a blue-green stain on the brass portion of the cylinder valve, the cylinder may have come in contact with anhydrous ammonia which is often used to manufacture illegal drugs. In either of these instances, place the cylinder in an area where hazards from ejection of the valve and product loss would be minimized and contact your supervisor. Requalification. All refillable cylinders must be requalified at regular intervals. Requalification is normally not handled at dispensing locations and should only be performed by trained individuals whose facility is registered with the DOT. When reading requalification markings, a date without a letter indicates the next requalification must be within 12 years. The letter S following the date indicates the cylinder must be requalified within 7 years of the mark date. The letter E following the date indicates that requalification is required again within five years of the mark date. Cylinders that are out of qualification should not be refilled. Instead, they should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. 
purging. In order for equipment to operate properly and to keep customers safe, both new cylinders that have not been vacuum purged by the manufacturer and those that have been opened to the atmosphere must be purged of air or moisture before filling. If air or moisture enters a propane cylinder, it can slow down the filling operation, create unusually high service pressures, cause regulator freeze-up, or cause fading of the odorant in the cylinder. Steps for purging cylinders with propane vapor. When purging cylinders with propane vapor, it's important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. Using propane vapor to force the air out of a cylinder is an effective purging method that is often used at refilling stations. Cylinders should always be purged in an approved area where there are no ignition sources. Follow these steps to purge cylinders. Step 1. Connect the vapor hose to the cylinder. Ensure that you have the correct fittings installed when connecting the vapor hose to the cylinder service valve. If the service valve on the cylinder does not have a female POL opening, attach a cylinder service valve adapter to the POL adapter that is installed in the vapor line hose and valve. Securely tighten the vapor hose assembly to the cylinder service valve. Step 2. Pressurize the cylinder with propane vapor to 15 PSIG. With the service valve closed on the cylinder being purged, open the service valve on the purging cylinder. Gradually position the ball valve on the vapor hose to allow propane vapor to vent into the cylinder being purged. If no leaks are detected, Open the service valve on the cylinder being purged. Observe the gauge on the purging manifold until the pressure reaches 15 PSIG. Step 3. Bleed off the pressure in the cylinder. Gradually position the ball valve on the vapor hose to vent a small volume of propane vapor and air until the pressure gauge reaches 0 PSIG. During this bleed-off process, be very cautious as a small amount of propane vapor and air will be released. To prevent ignition, venting should be done at least 25 feet from any open flame, smoking area, portable electric tools and extension lights, and at least 35 feet from any metal cutting, grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering, or welding. Step 4. Repeat the purging process. To be sure that roughly 97% of the air has been purged from the cylinder, continue to pressurize and bleed off the pressure in the cylinder at least four more times. Leave the vapor return hose connected until the final purging has been completed. Then, repressurize the cylinder to 15 PSIG. Close the service valve on both the purging cylinder and the cylinder being purged and check the cylinder for leaks. Never purge with liquid propane. This may cause the liquid to flash into vapor, chilling the cylinder and condensing any moisture vapor on the walls. In addition, only a small percentage of the air will be removed. Filling Cylinders Before filling a cylinder, make sure you are aware of the following information regarding safety and handling procedures. Know your facility's fire prevention and emergency evacuation plans, including where and how to operate emergency shutdown and pump controls. Locate the nearest fire extinguishers and make sure they are in proper working condition. Only use fire extinguishers to create an escape route, not to fight a propane fire. The only safe way to extinguish a propane fire is by stopping the flow of propane. Before operating a filling station, ensure there are no ignition sources within 25 feet of the points of transfer, or metalworking operations including grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering, or welding within 35 feet. Be sure that valves are properly protected with a valve cap or protective collar and always use proper cylinder handling techniques. The OPD should never be used for determining if a cylinder is full. The OPD will not always stop the flow of propane into a cylinder at the proper fill amount. 
Pre-filling procedures. Before starting the cylinder filling operation, follow these steps to ensure the safety of you, your customers, and fellow employees. Always put on appropriate personal protective equipment before filling cylinders. Do not allow unauthorized people in the filling area. Open the secured filling area and inspect the cylinder filling station equipment. Remove the hose from its secure storage location. If the location isn't weather protected, remove the dust cap or plug from the hose filling adapter. Open the appropriate liquid outlet and bypass return valves on the storage tank. Please remember that an operator must be present during the entire filling procedure. Filling cylinders by weight. Cylinders with less than 200 pound water capacity and subject to DOT jurisdiction must be filled by weight. Be sure to check with your supervisor for any exceptions. When filling portable cylinders by weight, it is important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. Make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Follow these steps to determine the total filled weight of a cylinder. Check the water capacity and tear weight stamped on the cylinder or its protective collar. Determine propane capacity by using the following formula. Water capacity times 0.42 equals propane capacity. Add the tear weight and propane capacity together to determine the total filled weight of the cylinder. Set the platform scale to the cylinder's total filled weight plus the weight of the hose and fitting. Place the cylinder on the scale. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the cylinder valve. Remove the protective cap or plug from the valve. Connect to the cylinder. Start the pump. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve, then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When target weight is reached, close the hose end valve. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid is vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Verify the filled weight as required by regulations. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. If the cylinder has a POL service valve, reinstall the valve plug. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Apply DOT labels and a cylinder warning label if the manufacturer's label is not legible or you removed a paper or plastic sleeve. Automatic and manual shutdown systems. The steps to fill a cylinder by weight using an automatic shutdown system are generally the same as a manual system with the exception of the stop filling trigger. In an automatic system, when the balance beam rises, it triggers the automatic shutdown device and stops the flow of liquid propane. In contrast, a manual shutdown system requires the operator to physically shut a valve to stop the flow of propane when the beam rises. Regardless of whether the dispensing equipment is manual or automatic, the operator must set the platform scale for the proper filling weight and be in attendance during the entire filling process. Filling cylinders by volume. Before filling cylinders by volume, open and close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge to be sure vapor vents. If no vapor escapes, the valve may be blocked and must be reopened before the gauge will operate properly. Do not attempt to fill a cylinder by volume if the fixed maximum liquid level gauge is damaged or inoperable. To fill cylinders by volume, 
Make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the filler valve or service valve. Remove the protective cap from the valve. Connect to the cylinder. Open the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If mist appears when the gauge is opened, stop. The cylinder is already full. Start the pump. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve and then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When a white mist begins to escape from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge, immediately close the hose end valve. Close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Failure to shut off the propane promptly will result in an overfilled cylinder. An overfilled cylinder may discharge propane if the temperature rises, posing a risk of fire or personal injury to anyone nearby. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the cylinder service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid has vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. If the cylinder has a POL service valve, reinstall the valve plug. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Post-filling procedures. After the cylinder filling operation has been completed or any time the filling station is unattended, close the valves at the storage tank. Store the hose on a rack inside a fence protected area, inside the dispenser cabinet, or secured to a supporting structure inside the filling room. If the location isn't weather protected, install a dust cap or plug into the hose filling adapter. Secure the installation against tampering or unauthorized use. Cylinder Labeling DOT and OSHA require specific labeling for all cylinders. Cylinders used to transport propane must be clearly and durably marked with the proper shipping name and hazard class. Cylinders used in industrial applications must have additional warning information. In addition, the consumer information or warning label must be on all portable refillable cylinders of 100 pound propane capacity or less not filled on site. The label must include information on the potential hazards of propane. Be sure to apply a new warning label if the original manufacturer's label is not present or clearly legible. Cylinder loading and transporting. Prior to returning the cylinder to the customer, be sure the cylinder valves and fittings are protected against damage while being transported. Cylinders greater than 4.2 pounds propane capacity must be positioned so that each cylinder's pressure relief valve is in communication with the vapor space at all times. Cylinders must also be fastened securely in a position to minimize the possibility of movement, tipping, or physical damage while in transit. It is important to recognize the difference between horizontal and vertical cylinders. They are typically marked to indicate which position they are to be stored and used in. In the event that the relief valve needs to vent while having liquid in the valve and the cylinder is not positioned properly, the situation can become hazardous. Closed body vehicles, such as passenger cars and vans, are limited to a maximum of 90 pound propane capacity, with no single container having a capacity of more than 45 pounds. Verify with state and local codes, as they may be different. In addition, Check with your supervisor to determine if it is your company's practice to distribute safety information to customers when cylinders are filled. Properly inspecting, filling, and marking cylinders enable you to safely serve both your customers and your company.